This episode of Virtual Pinball News of the Week is brought to you by the Virtual Pinball Weekly Challenge. We are a group on Facebook who love to play some pinball. We've got three tables a week, one for league play, the Throwback Challenge, and a Weekend Warrior. So if you're like me and you want to play pinball with some awesome people, make sure you check us out on Facebook. VPX 10.8 Beta. Is it for you? Are you ready to make that jump up? Let's talk about it and find out. What's up everyone, I'm Gigi Pinball, the host of the Virtual Pinball News of the Week. Alright, we have a special episode today. We are going to be totally focused on the new beta 10.8 version of VPX. Why are we focused on this? There's a lot of reasons. You're going to see recently there's been a lot of tables being released that they say you need the 10.8 version of VPX to run and these tables are fantastic and you're seeing more and more and more of them. A lot of people are afraid to jump and make this switch more so than the people that were very weary on making the jump to the 64-bit version of VPX and rightfully so. 10.8 uh, is still in beta and so there is ups and there is downs about that. Today we are going to discuss a few of these features that would affect you the player directly. These are the features you definitely need to know about and will maybe make that decision whether you're ready to jump and try these new tables or not. Under the hood stuff aside, there are two major features I'm going to discuss with you today that I think everybody should be aware of and know about. First one is the new point of view system. In particular, they've added a new windowed mode that is specific to cabinet owners. This window mode is going to allow you to kind of shift your table down at the front, up in the back if you need to, make all these different adjustments. It is a tinkerer's dream. It really does affect the point of view and makes it look a thousand times better in my opinion. Some of the older tables that had like bigger backs, uh, diner, ACDC is a good example. They really looked kind of squished towards the back. This new point of view system definitely alleviates any of those issues that you had. The point of view is very subjective but I am going to go over that whole new POV system and show you kind of what improvements they've made on that. The next thing, and this could be one of the more monumental improvements and additions to virtual pinball, is frame pacing. Okay, without getting super technical nerdy on everybody, I'm going to try to give the very basics of frame pacing and the reason why you should be caring about frame pacing. Something that's always affected players is input lag. Input lag is the time from when you push your button, then the time that it takes to actually make the reaction on your screen. A lot of people that go from real pinball to virtual pinball notice this more, I think, because you don't have that calculation that needs to be made. Originally, VPX, the way that it would work is basically work with the frames per second. So uh, for every frame per second, it calculated the flipper lag. Well, now, with frame pacing on, it separates that calculation. And basically, instead of adding that in with the calculating of everything going on, it is constantly running, which virtually eliminates flipper lag. This is fantastic. Believe it or not, a four millisecond lag as opposed to a zero millisecond lag is quite a big difference on something when you it's really like last split second reaction that makes the difference on everything it matters it definitely matters and it makes a big difference this could be the difference between the average player turning into the awesome player in my case i'm bad and now i'm not as bad but if you want to find out about that the Virtual Pinball Weekly Challenge is a group of people on Facebook who love to play pinball. We play three tables a week, being a league challenge, a throwback, and we have a weekend warriors challenge. This group is awesome. I've been with them for over a year, and it's just a bunch of fantastic people that love to have fun. I don't see drama in this group or anything like that. We just like to play and have fun. New merch, baby. Look at the shirt. Look at the shirt. It is freaking gorgeous. New merch. This is worth joining alone to rock the merch. And we are just excited to have you join us. And listen, 
you want to play me because I suck and you want to see how bad I suck. Well, this is your chance. Virtual Pinball Weekly Challenge. I'll have the link down below. Make sure you come and check us out. Now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to switch over to the machine for a few and I'm going to go over a few things with you. We're going to go over the where to find the beta and we're also going to go over nightly betas. We are going to take a table and go through the new POV system. And I'm going to show you how to turn on frame pacing and we'll probably even play uh, a little bit just so you could see in the corner of the counter and you can see the difference that it makes from frame pacing to non frame pacing and all that. So stick around. You don't want to miss this. So this is the GitHub page. We'll put the link down below so you can get right to it. Now, before you start this, uh, you might need to make a account for GitHub. It's a free account. You don't have to pay anything additional, but you know, you'll go into this top right area over here and make sure that you create your account and log in. So you're going to see this, and if you don't have an account, you'll be able to download this, and you see you've got beta 5, beta 4, yada, yada. Um, but this beta 5 is not the nightly build. This is what I guess they're considering the release build. We want the nightly build because that has like the most up-to-date stuff. So after you have logged in, you'll go into actions over here. And it's going to pop up all of this stuff over here. We're going to look for the master one. It's a few down you can see. We'll click on that. And then this gives you the files down here. So 1547 is the newest as of right now. So we're going to go over really quick. There's two versions currently right now. Well, technically four versions. All regular versions of VPX before this have been DirectX versions. GL was used when you were using a virtual headset. So I guess when this actually does release, it's only going to be a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version. But for now, there's kind of one separate of each. For the purposes of this, I'm going to download the GL version because from what I'm hearing, this is going to be the way to go. It's the way how things render. There's a lot of advanced features in the back end that are improved on the GL version as opposed to the DirectX version. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to download one. We're going to go, you'll see there's debug and release. We want release GL64. And you see this one, like I said, this is 10.8.0, 15.47 is the build number. So we're going to download that. All right, so now you got this file downloaded. You're going to open it up. And this is what we're going to do. We are going to open up where Visual Pinball is stored on your computer. We are going to take all these DLLs and copy them over, bring them on over, replace them. It's all good. Then we're going to go into shaders. We're going to do the same thing. Take these shaders, copy them into your shader folder, place them. This should not affect your current installs. You'll still be able to use your current installs. I'm going to do the same with scripts just to be safe. Bring them into the scripts folder. All right. Now, the only other thing that I want to go over real quick is if you already had the GL version installed, you might want to take this version of it and bring it out somewhere else. What I usually like to do is, especially if you're doing these nightly builds, because they really are nightly, sometimes a few a day, it seems like. I like to name this a little bit differently. And this is also going to play later on in the video when we talk about using the uh, alternate launcher in in a pinup popper. So for this GL64, I'm going to put underscore 10.8 point, we'll use that 1547. All right. Now we can put that into our VPIN folder. All right. Okay. So that's step one. So now we've got it installed. Let's open her up. You see, I have a few different versions here. Um, here's our newest 10547. So we're going to open her up. All right. And it opens up just like normal ones would. Right. So first, I just want to show you in the preferences. We're going to go into video graphics. And uh, you can see it's, it's different a little bit. So the first feature. Uh, we spoke about is frame pacing. Again, this is going to separate the input lag calculations from the video rate. So this will basically eliminate flipper lag. So you want to go into synchronization mode, 
go down here and choose frame pacing. All right, okay, easy so far. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is look at the new POV. You're gonna go in here for this purpose. I made a new copy of the uh, G5K attack from Mars. You can see I kind of gave it the header so I knew what version I was messing around with. So we're gonna open her up. And just like our normal, we're gonna go in and edit the POV. So you can see it's gonna load up kind of weird, but that is okay. Let me get a better view for everybody. Once you uh, hit your plunger or your launch button, you're gonna see it goes more into a traditional view there. All right, so let's change this view a bit so you get a better idea of what we're dealing with now. As you can see, I got a close-up of here of all of our new settings, plus I have an overview of the field. Like I said, there's a few different new modes. For cabinet owners like myself, window is going to be the new one. It's supposed to be looking in like a window, right? So what I usually like to do is, you know, we've got our vertical offset, so that's our up and down, right? We all know that one. The table X, Y, and Z scaling, this is gonna be, you can see it highlights two at a time, so it does like the whole everything. So I like to get it a little smaller so I can get the whole field out there. Okay, so you've got top Z and window bottom Z. So this is gonna be the, um, the tilt on the table. So you can see like if I'm doing the top one, you can see the back of it is tilting upward or down and the same with the bottom. So this gives you a lot more. One of the issues that we've always had in the past was like you get the bottom looking really good and the back of the table looked kind of jacked. This is here to prevent that. Uh, X you ain't gonna touch because that kinda would be like if I was moving from side to side, that would be that. So it kinda throws things off a bit. See, you can see, yeah, I messed up there. Um, y is the same where it kinda changes the perspective of where you look. And Z goes up and down in that aspect too. So usually what, uh, what I've been liking to do is, Good thing would be, uh, you can actually get pictures of point of views and try to get this to match as close as possible. I usually like a little bit of that, that, you see the white, red, and then a little bit of that white on the flipper down there. But I also like to make sure that it looks like I can see the table. So for this, we're gonna make this a little bit bigger. Or I'm gonna bring it up. Try to keep these as close together around the same as possible before I start messing out with other ones. So like this is a decent, it's filled out a lot of the screen. Um, I am going to, X is, <laughs> they've switched where X and Y were from older versions. So X is your width of your table. So I'm gonna get this to about where it needs to be. Looking pretty good there. And lengthwise, Lengthwise is actually not too bad either. So really the big thing would be is if I'm going to change the top or the bottom, you see this is going downward to make it a little more of a flat look to it. They also say that uh, flush mounting your monitors now uh, definitely helps. And um, I just did that recently and actually, you know what? It's not that bad, I kind of like that. Uh, bringing this down a bit, I'm actually gonna end up doing the YZ a little bit more. Uh, kind of feel it gives it a very good look and balance. Maybe a little bit longer. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. I'm kind of feeling pretty good about that for this table. Uh, again, you know, we can mess with, I like kind of where that is. Actually, if I bring it down a little bit more. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That looks good. That looks real good, actually. <laughs> like, real good. <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of feeling good about this. This looks friggin' awesome to me. So, yeah, so that is what the new looks and the new features of the POV system do. So we're gonna check out Attack from Mars. Now, if you wanna do frame pacing or check out where you are on it, 
I'm gonna hit F11. In that bottom left-hand corner, you're gonna see that box. Right now, because I am recording, I'm gonna get a little bit of red in latency because there's a lot going on in the back end here other than pinball. Uh, but normally, if I'm not doing recording, I'm just playing. There's no red box. I'm locked at 120, and my latency is zero. But that is how you will be able to tell if you are where you need to be with the frame pacing. As you can see, nice install. I am playing, and we're set. So last tip of the day, if you are going to be messing with this stuff and checking out the nightly builds, right now it's highly suggested because they are betas to not get rid of your old systems, uh, keep your regular release versions of VPX going, use the 10.8.5 versions for tables that need them. So like I said, uh, recently we've seen Guns N' Roses come out. JP's tables are all been like 10.8. They have to be that 10.8. I believe last action hero was we're seeing lots of big updates that are going to require this so if your tables are running good keep it good if you can run 10.8 i personally have tested close to 200 tables in 10.8 and only had a handful that had issues and those issues have actually been really ironed out it seems with like the nightly build so like the if you don't do an account and you get that 10.85 version that's on there, you might see some graphical issues. Monster Bash from VPW was a good example. Uh, the uh, Hellraiser table, I noticed there were some graphical issues with the cube. You'll see certain things like that, but the latest versions have gotten rid of that. So it's very important that you make sure you sign up for a GitHub account and get a nightly build if you're gonna be messing with that. So going into that, Really one of the best things to do is uh, you could still run if everything's running good. Don't, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. But if you want to mess around with this, the best option would probably be using pinup popper and on the specific tables that you do need to use it, use an alternate launcher. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go in here. You can go into game manager and pinup popper. And on the top up here, you can see lookups and down here you see alternate launcher. Right, so we're gonna add that. So we're gonna go in here. Remember I told you, you know, I kind of name my stuff pretty weird. We're gonna get that whole thing right there. This is the one we downloaded before, the GL6410.8.1547. That is a mouthful. You're gonna add it into here into alternate launcher. Save list. Now, if there's a game specific like my attack from Mars and I wanna launch from there or Monster Bash or anything like that, you'll find your game. There's attack from Mars. You'll go down here to the bottom right. You see alternate launcher. There she is. So now when you launch this game from Popper, it's gonna use the correct version that you need to launch it. And that's it, that's my video. Is this for you? Well, if you're cutting edge and you wanna be, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I absolutely love it. Like I said, I've tested most of my tables. I've almost exclusively now in like 10.85. And uh, I will definitely say that the frame pacing alone makes it worth it. And now that I got better quality on how I can actually set my tables, it's a tinkerer's dream, but it's that rabbit hole that we all suffer in this in this hobby, right? Like you start playing, now you gotta do it for everything. I'm sure there's tables on here that I'm never gonna really play all that much, but I'm gonna make sure they look damn pretty in case anyone else wants to play them. So yeah, 10.8. Definitely think you should go with it. Launch from Pinup Popper. I think that's the way to go until the full release client comes out. If you liked what you saw, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you got comments or questions, you can hit me up on the comments down below, or you can write me an email at ggpinball at gmail.com. I'm Gigi Pinball, and this has been your Virtual Pinball News of the Week.